y'all, my name is Rachel and welcome to Cute Apron Cooking. If this is your first time here, I'm glad you stopped by. And if this is not your first time here and you're a regular viewer, thank you so much for your support. November 3rd is National Sandwich Day. So I wanted to create a yummy sandwich for y'all to try so you can celebrate National Sandwich Day as well. The sandwich we're making today is a mini beef and mushroom sandwich with a horseradish cream sauce and some fresh chives. So let's get started. If you would like to get notified of all the new recipes I post, go ahead and click subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell. The ingredients we're going to be using today will be a New York strip steak with the Lowry's steak and chopped marinade, cremini mushrooms, a couple tablespoons of butter, sour cream, prepared horseradish, garlic, parmesan cheese, a loaf of refrigerated French bread, and fresh chives. In one of my past episodes, the mystery box challenge, Hannah picked up the steak and chop marinade for me to use, so I had a little bit left, and that's actually what I marinated the steak with today. You can pick this marinade up at Walmart if you want to try it out, it's delicious, or you can simply just salt your steak. Salt it on both sides and let it sit out for about 30 minutes, and then you'll be good to get started on cooking it. If you want to watch the mystery box challenge, there'll be a link in the description box. First thing, we're going to start with making the buns for our sandwiches. You want to do this step first before you actually start cooking the steak because the oven temperature for the bread is going to be lower than the oven temperature for the steak. So cook this first and then increase your oven temp. Right now I have the oven set on 350 for this bread. We're using the Pillsbury French bread today and you can see it says it's 13 inches. So we're going to go ahead and open it and you'll want to stretch this out till it's 16 inches. So just increase the length of this by 3 inches. And we're wanting to get about 8 sandwiches out of this. So just cut this into 8 sections. And after you cut it, you'll want to put the cut side up and just kind of flatten that out a little bit and place those on either a sheet lined with parchment paper or just sprayed with some nonstick cook spray. After you get all of the pieces of dough on your parchment paper, you're going to want to grate some fresh Parmesan on top of these. I'm a fan of fresh Parmesan compared to like the jar Parmesan. It might be a little more expensive for fresh Parmesan, but the jar Parmesan cheese has a filler in it and so you're actually paying for just wood pulp. It's usually listed as cellulose in the ingredients. Just go ahead and place these in the oven. Um, they're gonna bake quite quickly because they're small, so check them after 10 minutes and then you can adjust to see if they're done or if you need to add more time. Ooh, look at those, those look so good. Once you get the bread out of the oven, go ahead and turn your oven up to 400 degrees. Next step is to prepare the yummy sauce. We want to go ahead and make that up and set it in the fridge so the flavors can be blending and it will be nice and aromatic. So horse radish is not a radish at all. It's a root vegetable and it's in the mustard family so it's in the same family as kale and cauliflower, brussels sprouts, so pretty yummy vegetables there. The sauce recipe has two cloves of garlic. This is a bulb of garlic and it has multiple cloves on the inside so you want to just peel some of the outside leaves away and these are the actual cloves of garlic. So we're going to use two for this recipe. If you don't have a garlic press you can simply just cut off this end, peel off the skin from it and then you'll just finely chop it with your knife. It is a lot easier if you have a garlic press though, but that, that's the way to do it if you don't have one. Mm -hmm. 
you have a garlic press, you put the whole clove in, like the, the skin and all, just press it, and it makes almost more of a paste, and you can just scrape it off. Okay, the garlic is ready to go. I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of sour cream and two, one to two teaspoons of prepared horseradish, and just mix that very well until all the ingredients are combined. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on our steak. We're just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil in our pan. You don't wanna be deep frying your steak, so you don't wanna to put too much oil in the pan, just a light drizzle. You wanna put this on a medium high heat until the oil starts to shimmer a little bit. You'll know that it's ready at that point. Once you set the steak in the pan, you don't wanna be moving it around. You wanna just leave it in the pan where you lay it so it'll create a nice sear on the steak. So the method that we're using to cook the steak today is we're gonna start off with a pan sear for about five minutes on one side. After those five minutes, you'll turn your steak over. You'll remove the pan from the heat and put it in a 400 degree oven. The time will vary on how long you leave the steak in the oven based on how you like your steaks cooked. Next, we're gonna work on the mushrooms. Uh, today I'm just using some cremini mushrooms. They're really easy to find. I got these at Walmart. I got the pre-sliced kind because I didn't want to slice them. You want to do your mushrooms in a couple different batches because you don't want to overcrowd the pan. You want to have like a sear on the mushrooms as well and you don't want to steam them. So I'm just going to go ahead and melt a tablespoon of butter, put like a single layer of mushrooms, let them cook about four to five minutes and then stir them a little bit put some salt and pepper, let them continue cooking for a couple more minutes. While the mushrooms are sauteing and the steaks are finishing in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and cut our rolls in half and set the bottom half on like a cute platter or any plate that you would like. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get our steak out of the oven and we're going to place it on our cutting board. Guys, please be so careful and don't grab the handle of your pan once you get it out of the oven. I have burnt myself so bad in the past not paying attention in a rush trying to get everything done and grab onto a pan that's like metal in 400 degrees and it hurts so bad. Once the steak comes out of the oven, you wanna go ahead and place it on your cutting board and let it set for about five minutes before you try to cut it. Okay, when you're cutting a steak, you want to cut against the grain. And what the grain is, is the way that the muscle fibers run through the piece of meat. And you can see it's quite obvious in this piece that they run from side to side. When we cut it, we're actually gonna cut it diagonally. So it cuts through the muscle fibers in the meat. Since this is for a sandwich, I'm gonna cut off quite a bit of the fat and any gristle that I see, cause that's not gonna be very good to try to eat a sandwich with the big gristle in it. And once again, where this is for a sandwich, we're gonna want to slice this very thin, almost in like slivers. I got this little box of chives at Walmart. I think it was like $2. I don't know if they sell chive plants in the store or not, 
but I did not want to buy one because I have had the hardest time keeping this crazy parsley plant alive. Like I e either overwater it, under water it, forget I even have it. So that's why I bought these because I don't have to keep these alive. Then that, it dies on a weekly basis. So <laughs> we bring it back to life. Now we're ready to put our yummy sandwiches together. Okay, I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of our horseradish cream on the bottom. Not a whole lot, because I'm gonna be putting more on top, but this is just kinda to have the flavor throughout the whole sandwich. Okay, now for the steak, if you don't want to pay the price of a New York strip, they can be kinda pricey, you can even use a ribeye. Just you'll have to trim a lot more off of it, because they have a little bit more fat, but that's a cheaper option. Next, we're going to be adding our delicious, crispy, buttery mushrooms. Next, we're going to add just a dollop of our horseradish cream and then sprinkle the chives on top and we'll be ready to try it. Taste time! Come on! Okay, this is super, super yummy looking. So many awesome flavor combinations. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You want to dink it and sink it? Sure. <laughs> That's really good. It's like the perfect snack size sandwich. I could have actually put a little bit more of the horseradish sauce on it. I didn't want to put too much to start with. I didn't want it to be too overpowering. It, ha it does have a really nice flavor though. Mm -hmm. And the meat Definitely. is so tender. It's so good. Oh yeah. I highly recommend all her videos, so. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>